Hello, folks. Um, Bernie Prior. 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 Yeah. Yes. Uh, you come from New Zealand, but you're born in England. In England. Yeah, I've been living in New Zealand for almost ten years now. Yeah. You are what you could call, in broad terms, a spiritual teacher. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Um, although you'll look on my website and you'll see I'm a teacher, I'm not telling anybody anything. I'm just saying directly from my own experience, and maybe my own experience uh, um, will help others to be free. If that's the case, then that's what happens. So you're saying you're not teaching a doctrine, you're not teaching, there's no, uh, you're just showing what you are. There's no, there's no doctrine, there's, there's no intention to make anything happen. There's this, just a sharing in truth, there's just a sharing in the heart and a sharing in experience. So I'm not doing anything to, to, um, to change anybody's life. Only if that occurs, then that's fine. I'll just say, have a look at this and see if it's the truth. So I, I, yeah, but that, you know, the, the traditional idea of a teacher is mm. someone who, well, you go to school and there's a yeah. teacher and who tells you, you know, when we start A, B, C and one and one is two yeah. and stuff like that, um, you gather insight and mm. the ultimate goal of the teacher is that once upon a time you will start not only doing one and one is two, but understanding that then two plus one is three and then you can actually say one million five hundred and twelve plus whatever. Yeah. All that I'm saying is I'm not taking any um, ownership in what, what occurs to transform the person. I'm only offering a way. That's all I'm offering. I'm, I'm offering a way in the moment to have a look inside of life in the moment and, and see what's really there beyond the illusion of, let's say, our conditioning, our mind. In that way, I'm a teacher, but... Um, okay, but uh, mm, let's... Mm. The objective of a teacher is that his pupils or his students or the people that listen to him mm. would grow in understanding, in knowledge, in wisdom. There's, in definitely, there's definitely a growing there. Yeah. Um, what I'm pointing towards is not so much of the, of the growing... Uh, um, as beings, we don't grow. As intelligence, I say we grow. So as intelligence, we're, we're entering what we already are beyond existence, more intelligently, and then that will open up into existence. Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking at here, really. Wait a moment. You're not saying I'm teaching you anything but to open up to what is already there. I'm saying we're already complete. You're selling, but then you're selling me something what I already know. Well, um, no, I'm not selling you anything. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just, no, no. I'm just available for anybody that has a pull of truth, a pull towards the truth inside themselves. And maybe through my own experience um, in my life and in the moment might help to, let's say, um, free up the mind and the heart of another individual. And if that's good, then I, then I serve love. In that way, that's Okay, that's good. but so we could say you, you teach by example. Yes, te yeah. teaching by example and, and uh, living what I speak most definitely, yes. Okay, that's what yeah. we, in, in the esoteric world, sometimes call you, you walk your talk. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, but we cannot show you walking what you're doing because mm. we're only talking. But uh, so let, let's start with a few things. Mm -hmm. um, reality. I, yep. I think it's one of your favorite subjects and mm. we all think reality is this table and water and yep. you and yep. stuff like that and that's very nice and mm. stuff like that. But something in me tells you that you think reality is much wider. Well, um, again, I'm going to come from my experience. My experience is this is actuality. In other words, this is an act. This is an act. Um, there's an act going on, but it's a reflection from a place that's um, absolutely real. Whereas this keeps changing, and let's say is is relative to the personal um, expectations or conditioning of life. What I'm actually saying in in reality, this actuality um, is a movement of somewhere beyond our identity and yet includes our identity. And when that matches... Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let, mm -hmm. Let's take it simple. Mm -hmm. You say, I have a private reality. That's what I feel and yeah, see. A personal, private... A personal, private reality. Yes, I, I actually think this is a white shirt because yeah. we kind of agree that your shirt is white. Yes. Yeah, well, that's... And this is white and that's white. So, yeah, but well, maybe that... I see something different. It's my private 
yeah. experience. But that's actual. So, but then, so our actual experience is white shirt, white shirt, yep. that we agree on. Whether we See. like it or dislike it, Okay, that, yeah, that's, that's, so that's, that's my world. That's the, my reality. That's something that we've added to it. Okay, but then you say there is something beyond that. Oh, completely. And that's where something that is, well, a vastness that's beyond um, this idea of personal ownership, a vastness um, that's indescribable, but not beyond direct experience for the individual to have that direct experience. Now, we'll come to the direct experience, but... Mm -hmm. So you say there is a reality out there and there's a reality we perceive, the personal reality. Now, just percentages. Do I perceive 95% of the total reality or do I perceive 2% of what's there? Well, that would be the discovery, wouldn't it, Luke? The discovery would be how much of what I experience now is real, is really a flow into this actuality. How much of that is real? So that, that really would be, let's say... Oh, wait a moment, you go one step further. You say, mm -hmm. not only do you see a limited amount of what's out there, mm -hmm. but what you see might not be true. Because what, we your... see, what we see would be, would be so coloured, a lot of what we see is so coloured by our conditionality that goes all the way back as far as time began, and then our personal conditionality that we've added to that since our, our so-called okay. birth. Okay, so, for instance, since humans can see only a limited bandwidth of electromagnetic uh, radiation, which is what we call light, which yeah. is a very small part. And very slow. And very slow. You would say, total reality is very wide. Vast. Vast, yes. Yeah. Then the reality of a person is sizable, but mm -hmm. that reality, part of it is only perceived in your own individual mode. Yes, that's... Because the, of your upbringing and your thinking. Your I look at you and, and yeah, I have yeah. ideas and... That's right, yeah. yeah. All the conditioning that colours the actual seeing of what is here that is real as a direct reflection of what is, let's call it, immortal or eternal, the heart beyond us both. So if we could, if we could um, let go of or clean up that within our perception that's totally personally based around conditionality, around conditions, and open up to something far deeper, that place that doesn't separate you and I as beings, separate us as human beings, that actually unifies yeah, but, us. Okay, one of the people ask, mm. what is the mm. part of perception in this? Because we are at the moment on the internet and we're looking mm. at the screen, and someone says, what is the part of perception in that? Because uh, Mm. That feels like a filter, mm -hmm. but is it also a bridge? Perception or... You know, what I uh, see, you, I see you, and then yeah. uh, is that... Is there's, that a, there's, a, there's a filtering out, there's a filtering out of um, what's really here according to what I, the, the egoic perception, wants to be true. So that's, our, that's what separates every individual um, that makes an individual me is that we filter out what we like and don't like and we add in what we want to see through our unseen conditioning. Someone that's becoming more, more wise or opened could be said to be more loving, embodying more love. They lo no longer do that. That's all the judgments that our mind throw on to everything that we see. Yeah, um, coming back, so you say they have less conditioning or they have seen their conditioning? See through the conditioning. That we can't, we have the ability, and I'm suggesting only through stillness, that as we slow ourselves down, our perception, which is what the question was asked here, our perception um, speeds up or opens up. This, there is no perceiver in what I'm speaking to, so there's no individual perceiver. The, what we enter is the field of pure perception where there is no individuality, and yet the individual whole or oneness is that perception, the field of perception. So we actually fall in, let's say, in this discussion. Or uh, yes, but normally people would say, well, this sounds very wise if you take enough LSD or sit on the mountain, do Zen yeah, meditation, yeah. don't eat for days, whatever. You will get this feeling of oneness maybe, and in this oneness you understand that in, in the total depth there is things happening, but there is no observer, that this, this thing mm. in me, that things I'm looking at it actually doesn't exist. 
but it's it's very mystical. It's very far away from the the questions we have when we go out of the door. But that's not exactly what I'm saying, though. Okay. Rick. You see, that that is the conditioning. Um, for me, I'm hearing conditioning getting thrown on. Also, there is understanding. I'm here. I'm listening. Also, hearing. I would like to understand. Yeah. yeah. We, in other words, let's understand who we are. Let's understand what this connection is. Let's understand what life is. And so, so then through that, for instance, if I look at my own experiences, I never sought those experiences. I never sought an experience in my entire life of of the spiritual nature. They just came upon me. You and were not I, a seeker. Never, never, never sought in my entire life. Uh, I've. I've experienced um, this oneness, this love, and this unnameable experience it's beyond energy I, um, since I was three, um, all the way in, in through my teens, but in my younger days, I, I, I didn't have the intelligence of mind to understand what that was, never. Don't you think many children have that experience of oneness and oh, they just forget about it? They, they do, yeah. Or they're, they're told, you know, well, they're daydreaming. I, I can give you an example uh, of one of my own children um, who I, we, we took her on holiday in, uh, into Australia and she was just sitting on the balcony. And uh, this was when she was only five. She was sitting on the balcony. And as I looked at her, she was just still just absolutely still, eyes open, just sitting there, and she sat there for four hours without moving. For a five-year-old, mm -hmm. that is incredible. And she just sat in the stillness. That's all she did, and suddenly, with, with no warning, we, uh, I let her just sit there. She was absolutely, I can see that she was in some mm -hmm. kind of bliss or other. Um, she just got up and, and, and became this child again. And, and she said to me later, she said, Daddy, can I sit and, um, and be that again? She didn't understand what that was. That was her own being. And uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying here, that was my own kind of experience. I would experience um, ecstatic states, states beyond anything that I can describe as a very young child all the way through into my teens, and then I would have them ag again from time to time, until finally um, I had the, my growing intelligence, that's my intelligence catching up with my knowingness or those experiences, showed me what they were. That actually that was mm, my, okay. a, a direct experience of, of the self. But are you just uh, an extremely lucky guy, or maybe an unlucky guy because you you enter this world of spiritual uh, awareness and mm -hmm. uh, now you will not be a millionaire and you will not <laughs> fly to the moon and all those things that people want. You won't have a... Well, you might have Rolls Royces if you, if you follow the path of Osho. Um, but would you consider yourself lucky having found that experience or recognized that experience? Well, it found me. I didn't find it. That's the discovery. And I discovered, my discovery is that the it that found me is my own self, my own being. No, no, and, and I, I understand that. And it's in, in, but yeah. would you consider yourself lucky? No, I wouldn't. No, there's wouldn't. no such okay. thing as luck. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, people that don't have that experience, mm -hmm. would you call them less advanced? I would, I would say that um, in, in the times we are now, it is possible for many more people to have direct experience of the self, of what they are beyond their named identity than mm -hmm. ever before. I would say it was a lot more possible right now. Well, there's positive thinking, but there's well, billions there's of people out there who are just worrying about their daily bread, making rent by the end of the month, yeah. and say, oh, this is another one of these wackos who are, you know, yeah. well, up in the air. Um, mm -hmm. I would say, People cannot, like for instance, the, the viewers or listeners to, to this conversation, this sharing, until people are, are ready, they don't even come to things like this. They don't p pick up the newspaper and read it or the book to read it. They, they don't come to satsang or come to the teacher. It's, it's, um, it's this mystery that we always come when we're ready, even though we don't know we're ready. And that's my experience that, of a lot of people around the world. That is life. That is yeah, what in, yeah. in, 
Is well, that's, that, that's, that's, the, that's the mystery at work. That's the point. Yeah, okay, well, that's in the Vedas. They call it Ya Evam Veda, which mm. says uh, knowledge brings power, but in fact, it's when you're ready, the yeah, power yeah. and the knowledge will come to you. But yeah. my feeling there, or my, my worry, is that mm. how does that... Does that mean that there are two kinds of people? And I'm referring to Andrew Cohen, who says, uh, well, we have enlightened ones, or I'm enlightened, and yeah. the others are not, and right. thereby separating himself mm. from all the other souls, well, and know, some, making some kind of spiritual yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. He, is, he is up there because, or you are there because you yeah, have experienced yeah. all that, Men and, mm. and uh, thereby labeling mm. all the other people, while mm. maybe, maybe, and that's, the suggestion, their path is just different. They might have to go to the material uh, awareness. Every, everybody finds this in many different ways, but many years ago, um, possibly about, about five or, or six years ago, I made this huge poster um, which, which read, you're already enlightened, you just don't know it. In other words, you're already yourself, but you just don't know it. And I got a lot of stick from teachers from all over the world that I could actually take this poster all over the world for people to read and all that I was reflecting back is, is that it is the self that is here, it is being yeah, that is of here. Of course, but uh, from one point of view, if, if, mm. if there is uh, an impartial principle that guides us, well, maybe not impartial, but then why do we have people that are enlightened and others are not? You could only say we're all on the path to enlightenment at the different stages and uh, it doesn't make you better. I, th I think it, it's down to um, your individual choices in the moment, whether, um, whether you choose. There's so many factors, but we have a choice to be love. We have a choice to, to be in truth. We have a choice in each and every moment to look deeper than we did, let's say, yesterday or the day before. Now, I know that's a a linear thing, but that's that's the position we wake up to. We begin to wake up to having a choice in what's real. And so there's something that begins to awaken this in us, and probably an outside factor points towards it. Maybe just a little um, a smile on a child's face begins to yeah, wake okay, you up. But so, so many things can wake you up. We're progressing. You see, progressing along, along the lesson or the school that this life is yeah. for each of us. But then you mentioned two things. Uh, that we should become aware of the fact that it's all love and all truth. Now, now these I never two said should, though, did I? Okay, good. I never said Explain should. Explain what love means and what truth means, and what is the difference? Okay, um, the, the truth is there's no difference. Um, the fact, maybe, and I say a fact because, um, or one might discover that might be the better word to use, is that truth is nothing. So nothing and no one. So do you see how... Well, wait, 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 wait. That, so that's uh, to too, complex, too complex, too well, complex. Truth it? is nothing. Truth is nothing. So inside of, inside of us right now, inside yeah. of any individual right now, you can be still, absolutely still and silent and, and just be. Now, to the mind, that's going to drive you crazy because the mind, you're used to, as consciousness to go up into the mind... And oh, it wants to... The whatever electrons to to go and do something. Yeah, but the, yeah, but the, who who is it that who is it that's behind the mind that wants to do all that? That's the programming, um, individual program since this body came alive and and all its personal connection with friends, well, family, society, and all that's still quite embedded in there. And then there's this global conditioning that's since every time a child is born it's already trying to get in gets in around about 18 months two years uh, and this global conditioning comes in yeah, yeah. that you're a body mind identity but prior to the body mind i um, identifying with the body mind what was that child that child was just pure being and, and yeah okay so the child has built up an ego or a personality or a mask or whatever we call mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and you say yeah Away with that mask, away with the ego, with, away with the stuff deep inside there, mm. you find the treasure. But then you say the treasure is nothing. It's the truth that there ah. is nothing. Now this is what... Wow, you, you, you are this leading us into an empty hole. No, this is what I'm, I'm endeavouring to show you, that the truth is no thing. And that no thing is a, is a peace and a silence 
that in my own life there's nothing to say about because in that stillness uh, the experience is of such depth and of no need of anything, no experience. It's sublime. Okay, Absolutely but then, then you use the word, there, it's no thing, yeah. as in the way Hindu says, we cannot, or, or the Taoist says, mm. the Tao is not this, not that, That's not right. that. It, it's not me, it's not you, it's not the universe, yeah. it's not the cause. It's no thing. It's no thing. But the well, it, is No, no, it is everything, yeah. but we can only define it by, by using the word no. It is not this and not that, yeah? And what it is remains the totality and therefore the nothingness. But it, that is a little bit, it's a little bit of floating... It, it, uh, it's not when you actually apply being as nothing in your life. In other words, when you don't attach yourself to certain things, when you stop attaching yourself to identifying as your, your family is it, your, your country is it, your religion is it, you know, that's what it is. And so you're narrowing yourself down, your whole energy is, that's all there is. When you let identification with the identify, body, the mind, sub, and subject, object. If you only just allow the object to be here, the the whole object, but with no objective, so there's no goal, then to experience the whole of what is here is a it's a very deep realization. Uh, to experience the whole that um, I am not limited by my senses. I am not limited by my conditionality. I'm not, not even limited to this position that actually what I am is non-positional awareness. That's such an amazing experience. I mean, I can give you so many no, of those okay, experiences. Okay, it's great emptiness. But wait but a moment. It's not just that. It's, Luke, it's not just great emptiness. It's life-changing, a life-changing opening into something that is absolutely real, that is making all this and actually is our true nature. Okay, but if that is true, why do we all have this ego, this personality, this tendency to create things? Why, in fact, do we have hands and mouths and, and brains <laughs> to do things? If you say the, the, the ultimate object of our being is to come back to that source, which is nothingness and which is being one with everything, uh, where there is no separation, so now hey, but wait a moment, we're sitting on a table, you need water, or you just But have now eaten. you've got the life experience. Now you've got no thing appearing as everything, truth, now appearing as the love. So let's don't get um, emotional and conditional in the word love. Love isn't uh, what most people think it is. For instance, love does not cause pain, and yet most people think that love causes pain. It doesn't. It's the attachment to our projections of love that causes the pain. Love is not pain. Love is the universal Well, if the object of our love decides to take a walk... Then you've... you've, you've I know, it's your personal experience, well, but it what hurts. What your personal experience is, is without any wisdom, because um, the personal is fine, actually. The personal is a vehicle of truth and a vehicle of love that the personal gets changed, changed into this amazing openness of what really is present as the whole of life in a single body and it's animating our hands and it's drinking the water and it's enjoying life and it's enjoying expression uh, and it's completely unified with the total animation of okay. all life. I understand it. I go to India and I see people sitting there mm -hmm. and they are in this state of oneness and all day and they drink a little water and they wait for the food to come and they trust mm -hmm. the universe, all very nice. But most people have a job, children, work, have to do something. But why not Again, enjoy it? Why, why this, this juxtaposition, this, this strange uh, because position that we, on one hand, have body and mind and Body's ego great. and What's all that stuff, body? and on the other sense, yeah, but the inside, the inner mm. child, mm. The, the, the holiness deep within our soul mm. is often emptiness and truth and love that is, you know, amazing and what you, we should look for. But I'm here. Most mm. people are here. Why do, did I get this strange paradox in my life of, at one hand, being guided by my perception and, and, and maya and illusions, and on the other hand, there is this part. But that's not it's true a, perception. That wouldn't be true perception. No, but it is perception. I, I enjoy it, it, certain things. and yeah. But that's not true perception. That's still in the shallow. To, to leave shallow perception where there still is the invasion of personalized wanting 
personalised needing, yeah, personalised, uh, because that, that's our mind that's doing that. There's just a whole lot of energies that have um, gotten into us because we've just made choices from believing we're a body-mind identity, yet if we let go of believing we're the body-mind identity and just be stiller in our life, then something that is already animating the trees, animating the river flowing no, out there, animating, animating I, everybody... I see your point. It begins I, to flow as Luke. It begins to flow as Bernie. No. It begins to flow as that. And fine, and if all people would be more open to this inner core, and great. That makes what no I, what difference. I, what I'm trying to say is that I have this mm -hmm. ego. I have these problems of, of uh, no, naming and framing. Yeah, no, no, no. I, we have, we, I have it. Isn't it possible to see the ego and the personality so also as a perfection, mm -hmm. as the only way for me to learn to get to where you are going? Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's, that's the provision of the teacher, isn't it? The provision of the teacher is to reflect to the being uh, still, let's say, identifying with ego, body, mind, identity is it. It's to say, well, hey, I was once in that place, and that, uh, I've, uh, I've, through transformation, and I was through being honest to my innermost knowing, that I allowed that energy of truth into my body, and I stayed so clear with it in every moment of my day, you're just letting it in. Yeah, so you're yeah, still no, gonna, I, I, I agree with that. It's still just, gonna, if still, I look at a person, mm -hmm. yes, and I come from this point where you say, well, like me, he has an ego and personality and mm. illusions. Which is and all very beautiful, well, really. Well, that's what I'm saying, yeah. which is all very beautiful. We are all the blue sky, yeah. that's what you're saying. Yeah. You know, the, the divine blueness right. of all of us is there. But there's clouds in the sky. And in, mm. uh, in one of my poems I said, the clouds are just the hands of God playing for him and us to just enjoy. Mm. So our personalities and our path through life mm. oh, oh. Is, is of... A perfection in itself, even if it sounds imperfect, and even if we they have value, to, not to an end, because there's no oh, end to this. They have value to life discovering itself as life. The, yeah, the, yeah, the, that's the, exactly the, what the, I want to say. The is. value, but um, that means so. So everybody that, has value in oh, ego this has or value her. because um, we couldn't even have this reflective conversation and experience. Uh, together if this if this if there was no ego so the the ego is an a vehicle of expression for our being really and the, the, what also is going on here which um, may answer some of your questions is that what's going on here is we're extracting from from matter from our bodies from exi existence we're ex extracting, as it were, the explosion of light or love that created all this. So the intelligence that has created all this, the I within every individual, is also drawing out of matter, in other words, drawing out of our experiences, the truth and the love of our being. And as it comes out, then there's also the resistance of the matter, isn't there? There's the resistance, the holding of the, the matter, holding experience for a personal eye. So there's a whole um, uh, universal experiment going on here in an ordinary human life. Well, you can call it experience, but you can call it mm. a play. I mean, it's some a, of the Hindus would say it's Brahma, and he does his play, and it is yeah. self-reflection. Uh, but again, for me, in my life, I think it's, it, 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 it's a valuable goal to look at people and to be able to love them as they are without your... But that's your, what I do. Yes, but, with, yeah, you yeah, but you, you come with the message, yeah, yeah, but wait a moment. You can let go of all that ego and the personality I'm, and whatever. That's you saying that. I okay. never said that. You don't say that. No, no, okay. no. Let, let's be clear. That's, what, that's the projection of the mind. See, uh, it, it's peculiar because I just had this today and I often get this with people and I notice there's a, a thing on there... A, a, um, wherever it was and the questions there that I get I get this quite often as I travel around people look at me and, and think that I'm trying to change people and I'm trying to change things I'm not I, I just move around the world um, just expressing what I express because I'm pulled to do that it just it just happens and uh, anybody that I've ever experienced that, ha that 
that I know that's had real experience of their pure being, um, they just have done the same in some way or other. You know, it, it's just a, I, I felt clearly that this is what I do. I just move around. It makes no difference to me whether I go to, to, to a country and speak to people or I not. But my pull of being is to is to share yeah, with the people every moment, the truth of their being. Every moment we have this this ethics of, of compassion is and, and in my life I meet mm. uh, people and like you I I, I I see some things that mm. maybe they might not see and the question is do I do something about it? Like I see a person and said now well if I if you would just you know would mm. just take one minute a day and do this or do this or or shave your hair or whatever you know whatever mm. it is it would make your life much easier and you would see yourself better. Mm. The question then is, do I move or do I not move? Well, you see, I can't answer that for you. No, you but know? in any but, moment, that's but, a question. But to me, to me, that, that is, I'm, I'm hearing the growth of you as a human conditional being and you're crossing over that um, expanse of time and endeavouring to reach the timeless aspect of yourself, which could be could be called guru like the guru is that part of us that is sits in a place of truth um, right on the edge of existence and we we begin to reach that place oh, you, you use a word well, I, 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 we begin to reach that place everybody begins to reach that place more often man man becomes this guru than woman does but he starts to be this spiritual guru when actually he's not really absorbed and lived the truth that he's discovering totally as yet. So he becomes a little bit of a nuisance in people's lives because he kind of wags fingers and says, you should, you should, you should. And that's still the attachment of the mind in here. Do here, I'm not speaking personally. To me, all this is um, products of energies within the, the psyche, within the shallow psyche, that, that um, we are transforming. There's so much in our lives that are, are just plain robotic energies animating everyone. And, and we actually believe they're true. We actually believe that's Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, well, well, we that's the old Gurdjieff story. We are yeah. automatons. But, okay, if I don't want to be an automaton, not something that just responds to impulses and, and like... A, then like listen a center, deeper. Listen deeper. I walk out of the door. <laughs> There's a guy holding up his hand, he's begging, yes? Mm -hmm. What do I do? I can go to but the to automatic me, thing and say, oh, I'll give him some money. Or I can stop, think, and say, well, if I give him money, he doesn't work. He should work, uh, you know, there, there's, there, the government should take care of him. That's all mind. Yes, all that's mind. But what do I do? Those are the questions that where that idea of love and truth but those comes are, into those a are real things, play. You see, I, I can only say this to you. Is that, that clearly is mind, and even and you're hearing it's mind, so it's mind, so it's not real. Reality actually flows into actuality. In other words, um, the formlessness behind form flows into form and gives it shape immediately. We, through the attachment to the mind, have added something to that already original shape. Of, of the love that was once invisible. We've added something to it, and it's that adding something to it that's the robotic mind that divides us from each other, divides us from one source, divides us from one love, divides us from one existence. It divides us. So for me, what, um, what happens in here, everything is spontaneous. I don't have to think about what to do. It just happens. For instance, somebody came in the street today and asked this man for some money, but there was no no response, not reaction, no response at all, none. And yet, other people have asked me for money and I've just put my hands gone in to the pocket and pulled it out and given it. So that's the same, really, if you really look at this, that's the same in drinking water, that's the same in anything that's really natural in our lives, that it's a response um, of the innermost and it comes out through the body's need of that water, uh, and it just happens. That sounds nice, but, but it's it, also it's an real. automatic. It's not just nice. It's not a, it's not a thought about response, and but so it's, not it's the same automatic. as what. Well, in, in, in other words, show it, me the difference. What is the difference that when you do something from your, uh, you say your soul or your inner being, and you do it, mm -hmm. you know, or when you think about it and say, oh, I think about it, and my ethical thing is at this moment, I'll do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Or, but as I, an automaton, <laughs> I just go in the street, oh, there's a guy, I give him some money because I always do that. Or, alternatively, I never give, so I never give. All, so we have all, these three all these, things. All these, all these questions, Luke, are very simple for me. All that I'm hearing is mind, 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 layers of mind, layers of mind. And it's really quite simple, and any, any real teacher that I've ever heard speak or ever read about has said the same thing. Coming to stillness inside yourself dissolves all that, where your mind begins to, to open up. When you begin to serve life, Luke, when you really begin to serve life, serve life um, selflessly, in other words, you're just giving, giving yourself in life, giving yourself to drink the water, giving yourself to, to walk down the road, it, directly experience everything as it is, then the mind begins to slow right down, all the conditions begin to burn up. You might go through hell for, for quite some while as all the conditions in your body-mind identity burn out because you as consciousness are no longer looking through your mind's eye, you're looking through your, the, the okay, door of your fine. heart into all of this. Fine. And that has, that, now, that has an effect. It has an effect because suddenly you, you become so connected with the source of stillness, which as an expression is love, that there is no mind. And yet the mind is a, becomes a perfect open vehicle to truly see what is. And then what, what we discover, and this is a discovery in my own experience, when the mind is so still and open and receptive, then the heart's knowing manifests through it. And that's what all the, the, that's what the stars are, that's what the universe is, that's what you are, that's what I, are, I am is a manifestation of love coming into form and mind creates it. What we all do, we get stuck on the, on the door out into existence. If you get stuck in the door out in existence, you won't know anything that I'm speaking of inside here because you're stuck out in measurement of yeah, well, you're, you're in the maya of the, the illusion of the world. Okay, yeah. but a practical question. I noticed you eat vegetarian mm. and I don't. In fact, I do eat vegetarian when I'm with vegetarians, and I'm mm. not... I mean, I don't... There's days that whatever comes. I think that the universe will provide what I need. Uh, but that choice of eating vegetarian, does that come automatically, yeah. as you say, without thinking about it, or you have a whole theory about it? <laughs> you see, th this is where your mind thinks it knows me. Not no, 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 I just not, observe. I know, but, but also, if you're, if you're really honest, you'll see that the mind, not the man called Luke, but the mind thinks it knows. And while I, um, vegetarianism came upon me, I even have to have a quick look using my mind to discover how old this body is, around about 25 years ago, with no decisions, no theories, no ethical um, need, meat just dropped away. It just dropped away. First off, it started not to smell too good, and lamb fell away. Then so, it, and it just fell away. I didn't, I didn't need to do anything. It just fell away with no problem. Okay, well, th th that that's sounds fair. Yeah. Many people believe that they have to to exercise a lot, to discipline themselves, do meditation for five hours a day, stand on their head, do yoga, uh, eat vegetarian, uh, have no sex or a lot of sex or whatever. They, they come mm. with a whole set of rules yeah, yeah. to bring you to that point that you're talking about being free of mm. the maya, of the illusion, the self-deception. Whole books are written about what you have to do, and even 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 organizations like Transcendental Meditation, they say do this for five minutes a day or twenty minutes a day. Mm. Theosophy has their rules. Mm. Man, to get to the state of what you're talking about, mm. let's not call it enlightenment, mm. but call it the total awareness, state, the, the natural state. state. According to all these organizations and and movements, you have to do a lot. <laughs> do you, do you? Um, subscribe to all those or well, to some of those it, it seems a lot when when the mind through attachment to things looks at everything then it divides everything and and, and sees this 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 and it measures it and it measures it in what it will, will lose what it will gain um, the time it will take to do all that so there's all this all this energy of self self distraction going it's all it's all more self distraction to me, it's plain and simple. Simple honesty. 
simple honesty to, to one's own being. That's all it really is. But even that... Yeah, but then you turn that around and you say, mm. if you reach that state mm. of uh, better awareness, of full awareness, all these things will come naturally. You will do things that are okay. And that's actually what I have a book there called the Upanishads, which mm. are the very old Vedic things. Mm. What many of these Upanishads, these old people three, four, five thousand mm. years ago said, don't worry, all the discipline, someone who comes to you with all the discipline and all the rules mm. is not true. He who doesn't talk about it, but just is, mm. he is. That's what I'm speaking of. Yeah. And, and but so let's, let's but, do away with all this but discipline. But if you look, I'm sure what you'll find in there is that the, a discipline that's not a discipline, but, but may seem to be a discipline, is simple honesty in one's life that... All that, all that we can really do is look within in any moment and be true to that. So whatever that directs us to do is what we do. But who's looking inside then? Well, consciousness is looking inside. Uh, wait a moment. For most people, it would be the guy sitting on the shoulder looking that's inside, right. well, saying, oh, uh, should you eat yeah. meat? Should you drink alcohol? Mm -hmm. It feels like, in my case, my daddy looking there and saying, hey, yeah, all the conditions. Yeah, all yeah. the conditions. So, yeah. so I'm talking about... To be natural, I, there's nobody there and Luke, I can do so what many, I like. You're making so much problem of this. It's so simple, absolutely so simple. Just to be completely and absolutely unconditionally honest to what you know. And you don't have to grab hold. Don't look for a big, big sign of honesty this way. It can be about this big. This, this much honesty, and, and, and yet your whole being says, this is real, just this much. Oh. And you've got all the mind going, la, la, la. But, this, but it's this not only the mind. It's the world is full with churches and rules and yeah, laws. But that's the mind. Yeah, no, it the is churches, the mind. The laws, the rules, that's all the mind. But people go to church or subscribe to this or that belief system or this or that movement, follow yoga, whatever. That's all external pressure to achieve something what you would call internal freedom yeah well, well i never i've never experienced that in my life luke i've never needed to do any of that really nobody needs to do any of that well yeah, that, okay all, i understand it for you you say structures they're but do you structures. think other people should do that do all that stuff yeah I, I wouldn't say they should and i wouldn't say they shouldn't they could do whatever they do i'm only suggesting that there is something in everybody no matter how much weight of conditioning that we have in our body, have in our lives, there is something in us that's just the size, size of a seed, maybe, that you only have to go there and you begin to rest in it. But you have to keep acknowledging it, keep living from it, and it begins to be who you are and it opens up. That's how it is. It's that simple, but we get so distracted. I mean, look, look at where we live, um, where we are now in Amsterdam and many cities like this. So many distractions pulling you to this, pulling you to that. Taste this, have that, try this, do that. They're all the distractions. When something begins to awaken in you, just that little seed, then it doesn't judge those distractions, but something emanates from it that you begin to see that actually that's just a distraction and it's actually adding to my suffering, adding to my division, adding to my separation of myself as a being and my experience of being with others. It's, it's adding to it. So something begins to awaken in you and as you begin to head towards it by listening to it and functioning from it more and more, it begins to grow. And maybe... Um, after a while, okay, but doing here, this, I, here you might, I sense what you, you say is detach, off. detach from all these. No, you see, that to me again is effort, and that that uh, is like all those books that you read: do this, do that. No, this is this is your love awakening. This is the truth of you awakening as a being. That that it's not saying detach; it's just saying listen to what you know. Not as a judgment, and you must do this, and you mustn't do that. It's just saying. Come and rest in me. Listen to what you know. To me, listening to your knowingness is the same as saying, come and rest in that place. Lay your head in that place. Okay. Stand in that place. Fine. Now let's assume that some people have achieved more of an inner uh, peace, this, this state mm. we're talking about, is others. 
Now, then the question is, would they be more healthy? Would they be more happy? Do they radiate happiness to others? What is the effect of being in that state in the rest of the world? Okay, well, to me, what's happening then is more love is being embodied by that individual, um, quite naturally. Uh, therefore, a, a different frequency of being is coming in, and a, a frequency of being that is clean and I mean clean in the deepest place, I'm not talking about clean as there is a dirty, I'm talking about just clean, that, that a clean energy is coming in that's actually from beyond um, existence and yet manifests existence. In fact, it's holding existence and making existence possible. And so as this, it's our own um, eternal essence that's coming in, it's been allowed in, it's being allowed the space of this person and it begins to transform this person into the personification, so there's still yeah. the person there, of what we are beyond the body but in the personal. So we remain yeah, but as individuals. Uh, does that mean that our life will be better, that our health will be better? I mean, I, well, I, I remember when Sri Aurobindo and the mother was, uh, mm. died, man, everybody said, uh -huh, these people should not have died and they were beyond illness. And every time one of these great teachers yeah. contracts cancer or whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever disease, they say, ah. Oh, why does that happen? This guy was so enlightened or so advanced or whatever we call it. Well, that's and a yet misconception. It's a misconception okay, yeah. that um, enlightened being, the body of an enlightened being, in other words, the expression of an enlightened being, um, uh, doesn't die because, look, you only got to look at these words. They're passing. They're passing. They're being expressed. They're a, set, they're, they're a body as much as your body is, your physical body. A thought is a body as much as your physical body. What my movement, my, f my finger is an expression and a body creates a, a body as much as the trees blowing in the Yo. wind. So let, let me go there so that you, you'll get this. And, and so, because I want to give this to you, you know, yeah. <laughs> express it. And, and so that our expressions and one of our expressions as pure being is our humanness. Well, it's quite clear that all this passes away. It's quite clear that everything in existence, in actuality, comes and goes. But what doesn't come and go is the being beyond all this actually animating this. Even your thoughts come and go, the mind comes and goes, feelings come and go. But actually awareness doesn't come and go. And so that's what we really are. So it's ridiculous to think that it's wrong for a being uh, embodied to die. That's got nothing to do with who they are. That's just an expression. And right now, you and I, whether we know this or not and had the realization, um, you and I, or I, which is more true actually, I'm expressing on multi, multitudes of layers of beingness right now. We're multi-dimensional beings. And for me, and so you say one of those dimensions is still the human being and the decay of the, of the body and we're getting older and the, the hair gets greyer and yeah. stuff like that. That's part of us. It's part of us, but... W but what, there, there are what, people who say, uh, Sondra Ray said, no, 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 we, if you, death is just something you believe. They call themselves immortalists. And they say, if you don't believe in death, you don't die. Mm. I tell you, those groups slowly die out. You know, it's <laughs> yeah, like... Of course. Uh, yeah, it's because, <laughs> because what doesn't die is perception. What doesn't die is the being, the awareness. Yeah, but that die. that piece, would you say that this innermost mm. little yeah. thing, let's call it the soul, does it go on well, it's after not we the die? Soul. What is it that? That is not the soul. For me, the soul is unreal. The soul, the soul is, is uh, uh, again gathering experience. You you are what you are directly. Okay, the essence, whatever it is, the, the will essence. it go? live after us? Will it reincarnate? It's all that there is. It has, what you are as, as essence has no need to re recreate. It already is what it is. And what I'm, um, I'll go in that direction that, that our evolution as, a, as intelligence, we're evolving our intelligence, but we can't evolve our being, our being is already complete. So in the discovery of your innermost completeness, that grows your intelligence, that grows you as a human being of intelligence. And your intelligence begins to move beyond the speed eventually of light and comes to an absolutely stationary place. Now stationary to the mind means 
stationary, he's not doing anything. But I'm talking about stationary uh, of consciousness, where your awareness doesn't move. Now, the, the real reality is stationary. It's our minds that think well, the well, well, stationary. Does it mean it doesn't, it doesn't live in time? It doesn't live in time and it's already complete, so it has no need to move. What moves is our intelligence endeavoring to grasp who we are in the deepest place. So that's why, for instance, somebody might have a quite a deep experience here in this time in space, and ten years later they won't have the same experience, but their their awareness might go through that door, and it's a totally different experience and probably deeper, simply because in that measure of time, that experience has opened them to, to such a, a deeper power, that power has come into their existent life and moved them in more authenticity. And so their, their physical life, because of that experience, has grown somewhat, and they've grown more as a being being a human and their intelligence has grown and then when that space opens again although there's no really again it's always now it's just now because of the the integration of that opening seemingly over time yeah. we've lived it in other words it's been lived and you experience that opening you quite clearly see wow i only just tasted a portion of that now i'm more available to taste even more of what i am so we grow, we grow in intelligence as we let go of identifying with but, time and okay, space. Fine. But if that's true, is that you and I might be on a different level and, and the Kohen might be higher and Mohammed was on a higher point. At some level, people say that Maria didn't die, she just, whatever, went, went up in the air and joined mm -hmm. uh, Jesus in heaven. Mm -hmm. Is that where we're going to come to a point where material existence doesn't matter anymore? Well, if you're speaking in terms of evolution, in other words, of our, our species as human beings becoming Talk more intelligent... Talk on open the door, yes. <laughs> then, then what it means is we are evolving ourselves to bring in more of what we are from the deep and giving it life in our, in our actual daily life. But that begins to dissolve the personal ego. And as that dissolves the personal ego, we become more pure. Even though the ego might kick up a fuss, we become more pure. So within that, we grow as, um, as individuals of intelligence going deeper in our being. So here he comes again. So we're still online. Yeah, we're still online. And, uh, actually, uh, we might tell the people that uh, we will put this on YouTube. Your, uh, okay. this, uh, this thing and we will have another guest coming and his name is Ben Zion mm -hmm. and uh, he's an Amsterdam guy and uh, uh, maybe he, we can talk with him about okay. what, because what we talked about is something I know but I'm always facing this the, the harsh reality out there that I have to walk out of the door and make decisions where you say and then my mind kicks in there's no out there <laughs> that's the thing there's no out there that harsh reality is Images locked up in your own personal identity is images and there is the opportunity for your personal identity to be transformed by your being making your personal identity shine giving you greater creativity greater responsibility for creation in actual fact that's what's that's the potential okay yes, definitely okay thank you Bernie Pryor um, hello Hello. Hi.